If you clicked on this video, you probably already know what insulin is. And you may have heard that it's the hormone that stops you from losing body fat. You may have even heard it from some pretty popular figures. But I'm here to tell you that's nonsense. Now, we don't need to get into a battle of credentials because I'm going to prove my point using data from just three studies. Let's get into it. This idea that insulin stops fat loss is a pervasive one, and on the surface, it makes considerable sense. The idea, in a nutshell, is that the hormone insulin is released from your pancreas when we consume carbohydrates. And in doing so, this insulin will bind to your fat cells and stop your fat cells from releasing fat, thereby inhibiting fat loss. Now, what if I told you that is actually correct? But the reason you aren't losing fat still doesn't come down to insulin. Naturally, if that hypothesis held true, that insulin is the sole factor for why you can't lose fat, we'd see extreme fat loss on diets that limit or eliminate the main insulin stimulating nutrient, carbohydrates. And that's exactly what we see. According to this data, on a very low carbohydrate diet, we experience reduced insulin levels by almost 40%. And what happened to body fat? Well, it decreased, as shown here. And on top of that, it led to greater fat loss than the high carbohydrate diet. Okay, so have I gone off my rocker? Because I'm proving the point that insulin and carbohydrates are the contributing reason for less fat loss. And yet earlier, I said it was all nonsense. Well, no, I'm merely making a point that there are studies beyond this one that do show fat loss with a low insulin stimulating nutrition. Now, let's blow this up. In this second study, the researchers did something extremely difficult, but incredibly useful. They recruited people who were willing to stay in the lab the entire duration of the study, meaning they were allowed to have visitors, but did not leave themselves. The power of a study like this is the fact that all their food is prepared and monitored, so there is no doubt these individuals stuck to their nutrition. As a side note, these types of studies are extremely expensive and require a ton of work, so they don't come around often, but when they do, they are gold mines of information. For four weeks, everyone was put on a high carbohydrate diet, and then they were put on a very low carbohydrate diet for another four weeks. Here's the clincher. They equated calories, meaning that they maintained the same calorie consumption. We're talking extreme control of every variable that might throw off the results of the study, and they found the exact same results in measures of insulin. There was a drop in insulin with a low carbohydrate diet. Now, if insulin is the break on fat loss as we've been led to believe by some, we should see the same results as the previous study, a preferential drop in body fat in the lower insulin diet. And yet, there was no advantage of the lower insulin diet. Fat loss was the same between the high insulin diet and the low insulin diet. Even the researchers point this out specifically, wherein they say, the carbohydrate insulin model predicts, no idea why I went British with the trash accent there, but okay, so predicts a greater rate of body fat loss during the KD, which is ketogenic diet, period. Our data do not support this prediction because body fat loss slowed on the transition to the ketogenic diet. So, considering there was no added fat loss advantage, what is the reason for this discrepancy between studies? The distinction is the calories. Under both diets, the participants experienced the same calorie deficit of around 350 calories, leading to similar fat loss. But if you'll bear with me, I'd like to introduce another study that will really hit this home further. A study with a similar design, wherein the participants stayed at the lab for the entirety of the study. But they also water fasted as an added condition. These individuals were placed on a mixed meal diet containing carbohydrates, or they were put on a ketogenic diet containing extremely low carbohydrates, or they were instructed to fast from calories by only drinking water, and what happened? 
the ketogenic diet led to more weight loss than the carbohydrate mixed diet. But when comparing the body fat loss per day, they were the same, which substantiates the point that if calories are equal, fat loss is the same, insulin or no insulin. But what about the extreme, the water fasting? When fasting, called starvation here, the participants lost the most weight and they lost the most fat per day. So considering the fast also lowers insulin levels, do we then conclude that water fasting leads to superior fat loss because of lower insulin or because of the lack of calories? If you've gotten to this point and your answer is still insulin, I'd be curious as to why, considering the direct evidence indicates calories are the main culprit since the water fasting condition had added advantage of not consuming 800 calories prescribed on the ketogenic and mixed meal diets. It's these kinds of studies that really illuminate the reality of the situation. But this still leaves some outstanding questions because I did say that insulin does inhibit fat release from the fat cells. So why would a higher insulin diet still lead to similar fat loss? That's an excellent question that I just asked myself pretending to be you, but I knew that's where you were going. The reason is because while insulin does inhibit fat release from the fat cells and insulin is stimulated mostly by carbohydrates, there are other hormones at play as well, like acylation stimulating protein, which is a fat storage hormone stimulated by fat consumption, a bit like a fat version of insulin. Also, something else to consider is the fact that a calorie deficit alone, regardless of the diet makeup, lowers insulin levels. So yes, insulin is absolutely important, but it still isn't the main reason that you aren't losing body fat because fat loss can be achieved when eating carbohydrates or not. It really just comes down to individual preferences, especially as certain diets have advantages in other ways that may lead to that ultimate goal of calorie restriction. But that's a story for another time. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in more on this topic, I'd highly recommend checking out the linked video and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good one.